Hi. Analogy means correspondence or partial likeness or agreement. Analogy questions are quite common in verbal aptitude tests. The question contains a pair of words linked with a colon. These words are related in a peculiar way and we must identify the exact relationship between these two words. Then another similar relationship has to be identified from the alternatives provided. The purpose of this question is to test our logical sense, rational thinking and overall knowledge. The relationship between the words in the original pair or question pair will always be specific and precise as will the relationship between the words in the correct answer pair. Analogies come from a wide variety of fields. So we must have a sound vocabulary. Vast reading and good memory are essential for this. In other words, our reading should not be confined to only our subject. We need to know odometer measures speed and cavalcade is a group of riders. We should know when we stammer, we talk in a defective or faulty manner and when we look at a fresco, actually we look at mural or wall painting. When we have siesta, we are sleeping in the afternoon and when we are in slumber, we are in deep sleep. We must understand that if we are affluent, we are rich and when we see an affluent, we are seeing a stream. So to crack the hard shell of analogies, word power is a necessity. Look at this pair of words given in the slide. Here some of the common types of analogies are shown. Each one has a particular relationship. Let us see it one by one. Take the first one, abstain and refrain. They are synonyms. Synonyms are words having similar meaning but used in different contexts. The words abstain and refrain mean keep away from. But the difference is we abstain from a thing but we refrain from an action. So here the relationship is based on meaning. In the pair, wizard is a man with great magical powers, whereas witch is a female magician. So here the relationship is based on gender. In the pair, the word nomads means wandering people. And one word for a group of nomads is hold. So here the words are related on the basis of individual and group. And finally, caterpillar is the youngest stage of a butterfly. All living things have young and adult stages and these stages are known by different names. Hence, analogy questions can be based on adult-young relationship. To sum up, common types of relationship are based on synonym, antonym, gender, individual group, and adult young. Among these five, more attention should be given to synonyms and antonyms. Now we can discuss the different testing tactics that help us to answer the analogy questions. Look at the slide. The first tactic is to try to state the relationship between the capitalized words in a clear sentence even before we look at the choices. In answering an analogy question, first we should determine the exact relationship between the capitalized words. We should try to make a sentence using these words showing their relationship. Then check the answer options to find out a similar relationship. Let us try this technique with an example. Look at the example.
Here the capitalized words given are avalanche and pebble. How are they related? Well, we can make sentence that shows the relationship like this. An avalanche or sudden fall of rocks, snow or earth is made up of pebbles. Now we can check the answer options. Option A is swamp and desert. Swamp is marshy land. It's soft and wet. So definitely it's not made up of desert. In option B, oasis means a fertile region in a desert and whirlpool is a strong rotating current in an ocean. They are entirely different. Option C, torrent and droplet. Torrent means heavy rain. Droplet means rain drops. That means torrent is made up of droplets. So has the same kind of relationship of the question pair. Option D, fallacy and illusion are synonyms. One is not made up of the other. Hence, the answer is option C, torrent and droplet. Sometimes, when we identify the relationship between the two capitalized words, to our confusion, we may find more than one answer options having the same kind of relationship mentioned in the question pair. In such cases, we will have to analyze the original pair again to find out some other kind of relationship between the capitalized words. If there are two or more options having the same relationship found in the question pair, definitely that relationship cannot lead us to the answer. So, we need a second reading of the original pair. The second reading is to find out a different relationship between the words. This is what is called narrower approach. Let us see how we can do it. Look at the example. A sword is used by a warrior. Like that, an author uses pen. A doctor uses stethoscope to examine the patients. A surgeon uses scalpel in operation. And a soldier uses gun. In other words, tools of different people are mentioned. That's the primary relationship. If we use that relationship, we will not be able to pick one answer from the choices. So we should go beyond it and search for a secondary relationship. When we look closer, we can understand that sword and gun are not mere tools but weapons and both are used in fights and battles. They are used for violent action but in other options the tools mentioned are used for only peaceful or non-violent actions. Hence, the right answer is option B. Well, you know, in English language, there are plenty of words which are having more than one meaning. For example, gerunds. Gerunds means words which are used both as a noun and verb. They belong to this category. Take the case of the word S-L-O-U-G-H. If we pronounce it as slow, as is in the case of plow, it means a marshy land. When we pronounce it as slough, as is in the case of tough, it means remove the skin. The test makers often try to mislead us by using common words in uncommon ways. When we find a familiar word out of place, or not in agreement in a particular analogy, we should consider the other meanings of that word. Look at the example. Sap, vitality. Vitality means 
capacity to endure and perform functions. So here it means strength. The primary meaning of sap is liquid of a plant. It also means tunnel, silly person, etc. Do these meanings help us to identify the relationship between the question pair? Surely not. Therefore, we should think about some other meaning of that word. If we take sap as a verb, it means decrease or become weak. So sap, the vitality, means decrease the strength. Now check the options. None of the options except D has a relationship similar to the question pair. In option D, the word ebb means grow less or become weak. Hence, ebb the fortune means decrease the wealth. This is how we find out answers when a word has many meanings. Well, what do you make of when you hear these sentences? The taxi driver had only two fares. This is a homely fare. In the first sentence, the word fares stands for passengers. In the second, fare means food. Really interesting, isn't it? I hope you fare, I mean progress, well in verbal aptitude. What's an eye-catcher? It's something that immediately attracts our attention at the first sight. When we look at the answer choices, certain words seem to seize our attention. For instance, when we are looking for an analogy similar to embroidery, fabric, a pair related to cloth or stitchery can attract our first attention. Such words are called eye-catchers. In an analogy, two capitalized words are related in a particular way. Test makers create eye-catcher with pairs of words that are related in a grammatically or logically different way. This is a trap, so be careful. Take a second look to determine the exact relationship of the pairs. Look at the example given in the slide. The analogy given in the question is mentor, guide. When we glance at this analogy, option A will attract our first attention because the word advice reminds us of guide. When we guide a person, we give him many pieces of advice. A mentor is a wise and trusted advisor and helper of an inexperienced person. So option A is an eye-catcher that lead us to the error. To know this, consider the other word in the pair, that is medium. Medium is a channel of communication between the living and the dead. So medium does not advise anyone. Option B is also incorrect because merchants do not consume. They buy and sell goods that others consume. Now take option C, slave. Slave is a person who obeys commands and toils for his superiors. He does not by definition command anyone. So option C is also wrong. By safely eliminating the wrong choices, we reach the right answer. That is option D. Minister is a Christian priest and he sermonizes or preaches on morality. Thus, just like a mentor guides, a minister sermonizes. In English language, a word can be used in different parts of speech like noun, adjective, verb, and adverb. For example, in the sentence, she is a beauty, the word beauty is a noun. But in she is beautiful, the adjective form of the word beauty is used. In she beautified her room, 
the underlined word is in verbal form look at the sentence she dressed beautifully here beautifully is an adverb a word that tells us something about the verb or action so when we say we are trying to fish on a pan we mean we are using a flat vessel to do it but when we say we are panning the fish we mean we are cooking the fish so words often have several forms and meanings therefore it's very important to identify the parts of speech of the capitalized words to determine its meaning and thereby choose the correct answer if you suspect that a capitalized word may represent more than one part of speech don't worry in verbal aptitude analogy questions the relationship between the parts of speech of the question pair and the parts of speech of the answer choices is identical or same that is if the capitalized words are a noun and a verb the answer pair will be a noun and a verb in other words both question and answer will have same parts of speech so if we can recognize the part of speech of a single answer pair that will be the part of speech of the rest including the question pair look at the analogy question given let us apply the tactics we have discussed just now we are not quite sure about the parts of speech of the word cure in the question pair we doubt that this word can be used as a noun or a verb so here is it a noun or a verb let us check the first word in each option words like so force and sheath may confuse us for they are both noun and verb as a noun so means a female pig but as a verb it means put seeds in the soil as a noun force means power but as a verb it means compel sheath is a cover for the blade of a weapon and also it means to put it into a cover for example sheath the sword but the word sculptor tells us that the capitalized words and the words in answer choices are all nouns as a noun cure means sheath for carrying arrows in option a swine means male pig so the relationship between so and swine is gender based in option b Newton is the unit of force. In option D, chisel is a tool used by a sculptor. Hence the right answer is option D. Like arrows are kept in a cure, a dagger is kept in a sheath. So by looking at the answer choices, we can determine the words part of speech and this will help us to identify the meaning as well as the answer. Finally in order to answer analogy questions very well we should familiarize ourselves with common analogy types like synonyms antonyms definition class and member part and whole worker and tool etc a thorough understanding of the tactics mentioned here will help us a lot to overcome the difficulties of analogy questions Practice very well. Good luck. Thank you.